New England is jam-packed full of short-line railroads, which unlike Class 1s are incredibly diverse. Each short line has its own unique operations, equipment, and route, making for an adventure any time you go out to see them. Let's get out on the rails and see what we can see. Four River Transportation is one of the shortest railroads in Massachusetts. Operating in the cities of Quincy and Braintree, the Four River owns a 2.7 mile long line in addition to operating one mile over the MBTA's Greenbush Line. Named after the Four River Shipyard, where one can find its two customers, New England Fertilizer and Twin Rivers Technologies, Four River, or FRVT, is one of the strangest short lines in the state. It carries exclusively tank cars to just two industries, and it only exists to move cars from the CSX yard in Braintree four miles east to the shipyard. In addition to being a really short short line, the Four River features one of the most eclectic fleets of locomotives around. Here's one of those engines now. On a late Friday morning, we see the southbound Four River road train taking a string of tanks to Braintree. <laughs> Leading the way is Four River 102, a 43-year-old GE B23-7. That's right, the Four River still actively rosters Dash 7s in 2023. After seeing 102 on the branch, we arrive at Commercial Street in Braintree, where the Four River meets the Greenbush Line. Here's 102 pulling out onto the main line before shoving back to Braintree. These tank cars are used to transport two products to and from the shipyard, sewage sludge and fatty acids. The sewage sludge is refined by the New England Fertilizer Company and turned into, you guessed it, fertilizer. The fatty acids, on the other hand, are loaded at the Twin Rivers Technologies, where they'll be shipped out and eventually turned into soaps and similar products. Wasting no time, 102 begins its reverse move over the Greenbush Line. It's honestly pretty cool to see such an old locomotive operating on a modern stone tied line. About an hour later, after working Braintree Yard and turning around, 102 heads back to the shipyard with fresh tanks. Here it is at Eaton's Pond in Quincy, which provides surroundings that look nothing like Massachusetts. Finally, after about a two hour round trip, Four River 102 is back at the shipyard moving cars around. Here it is switching out tanks at New England Fertilizer. While the Four River is a really cool railroad to see, I have no idea how it exists. Its entire operation from start to beginning takes about 4 hours, and it only moves cars a total of about 4 miles. I have no idea why CSX doesn't just take over its duties. Still, I'm glad it exists now as a time capsule of 1980s railroading. If you've ever driven through Boston on I-93, the name Boston Sand and Gravel might ring a bell. If you've ever wondered where their sand actually comes from, believe it or not, it's shipped entirely by a railroad owned by them. 
New Hampshire North Coast, or NHN for short, is a Class 3 railroad operating between Ossipee, New Hampshire and Boston, Massachusetts. Every weekday, in addition to switching out a few smaller customers in New Hampshire, NHN runs a train from Ossipee Aggregates to Rollinsford, New Hampshire, where the train switches onto CSX's Portland subdivision, running overnight under trackage rights to Boston. Though it's now a CSX train symboled LL65, the crew still answers to its former Pan Am symbols DOBO and BODO over the radio. After hearing DOBO begin to head south on the former Pan Am around 8.30, we booked it to Exeter, a charming little town in southeastern New Hampshire. Just after 9 o'clock, the southbound Unit Sand Train woke up all those sleeping in the small town. Leading the way are NHN's two GP38s in addition to one leased unit. I've been told the owner of NHN is a rail fan, which explains why the locomotives on this train are cleaner than most passenger trains, and why despite being over 40 years old, the leader 3825's horn sounds brand new. Wasting no time, we got back on the road, meeting NHN once again at Cross Road in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Just before 10, the sand train emerges from the darkness, making its presence well known in the neighborhood of Ward Hill. Tonight's train is a respectable 20 cars, all loaded to the brim with sand. Over the course of the night, we all got our fair share of sand in the eye, especially back in Exeter. Once again, we headed further south, hoping to intercept them once again at Ballardvale. This chase through Lawrence and Andover seemed like it was going to be a close one, but luckily, since Ballardvale is single-tracked, NHN had to wait for a commuter train to clear. Around 10.40, our train finally made an appearance, rolling through nice and slow. It appears that at one point, Ballardvale was double-tracked, but at some point was reduced to just one. Luckily, the MBTA plans to right this wrong in the near future, adding a second track and a new station here soon. Finally, to end the night, we made our way down to West Medford, a stop on the Lowell Line. Like Amtrak's down Easter, the sand train switches from the Haverhill Line to the Lowell Line via the Wildcat Branch in Wilmington. Just before midnight, NHN rolls through. Later tonight, the train will drop its loaded cars at Boston Sand and Gravel and pick up the empties, returning as BODO around 2 in the morning. 